Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Jason. I'm a channeler and a Course in Miracles student. Today I wanted to come on just for a really quick uh, video. Um, I just wanted to go over something that I talked about in the last video, but I don't think I really got into it enough and I just wanted to share it. I think it's really important, especially now. Um, so uh, it's just two things. First is, um, so I um, have been working with Archangel Michael recently um, and with my sword. Um, all of you, everyone has their own sword and when you are ready you are able to to pick it up and use it and it's kind of like the sword of Excalibur that you can you pull it out of the stone once you're ready, once your heart is ready that you can just pull it out and you can start using it. And so I've been working with Archangel Michael um, with my sword um, and he has been helping me to to clear different places and this has gone on for about a year now um, it's not as much as before uh, but there were different places I think I've made a few videos about it there were different places that I was working at and then there was this um, cloister that I went to in rural Pennsylvania where I uh, was clearing uh, 300 year old energy and so he's just I'm kind of taking baby steps I think with him or he is teaching me in a, yeah and so I just wanted to share the technique Okay, so it's a very simple technique. Um, now, if you're not ready for the sword, so you, you first you have to communicate with Archangel Michael, and then he'll tell you if you're ready um, to use your own sword. And if you don't, you can't use your own sword, you can just use his energy and use his light. Um, now, the sword is uh, not necessarily like a sword that we know. It, it is kind of it's shaped. It's just like a lightsaber sort of thing is the way I kind of see it. And uh, the technique that we were using, uh, for example, when we we're clearing big places, um, is we kind of hold the sword in front of us and then we start spinning really, 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 really fast. And so that there's just light and we're just emanating light all throughout the area. And we just do that for a short period of time until, until we can feel that the, the light quotient has been reached. And then once that's reached, then it's time for us to leave that area as soon as possible because some of the energies that are going to be waking up at that time will be very confused if they see us and they won't understand what's happening. So it's important that we're not there when they wake up and when the energy is cleared. And so that's that's all it is. So you just either use your sword or use um, his sword uh, in, with him. And uh, so I'm just working with him at the moment and he would just take me to places that need to be cleared and or I would be in, you know, naturally in certain places that need to be cleared. And then I would just use the energy, kind of close my eyes and get that feeling of that energy and let it spin around and around and around and just feel the light just permeating every every nook and cranny, you might say, of the, of the area that I'm in. And I was doing that at some of my workplaces as well. Sometimes what happens, like what happened to me at that cloister and also some of my workplaces is that, um, I think I've talked about this before too, but just, just to rehash it, um, it's like that scene in Ghost, I think, where Whoopi Goldberg, I think it was, is Whoopi Goldberg, and um, she is a, a psychic, but she is a scam artist, I guess, in the movie, but then all of a sudden she starts being able to really see and there's this line of people waiting to talk to her and this is kind of what happened to me in my my workplaces as well there would just be this line of people and they just wanted to tell their stories and they wanted their stories to come to light and same with this cloister that i was in there's a whole bunch of stories that i need to um kind of put together i guess put into a book form uh, because these are the stories that they um when things are put out into the light, uh, the dark can no longer be there. Um, and that is one of the ideas of light working is bringing out the light, bringing out what, what was hidden. And once it's, once it's out, it can't be put in the dark anymore. Once, once it's in the mass consciousness, it's there. And so this is, yeah, they want their stories to be told. So yes, yeah, so this is how you use your sword. Okay, and anyone can do this, any place. Uh, but one thing I caution, uh, when I first started doing this, I was going around to different temples and I was uh, clearing um, different energies and, uh, or sorry, uh, temples and shrines here in Japan. Uh, one thing that I would caution is that um, you need to ask first for permission. Um, everything is there for a reason and everything happens for a reason. And so you need to 
be asked to clear a certain place. Uh, so we don't just go around willy nilly and just I'm going to clear that place and I'm going to clear that place. You 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 find yourself guided to the places. You'll know where you need to go, and you'll you'll be guided uh, to places that you are at a at a match for that you can handle. Um, so this is another thing I recommend. Don't don't just go around clearing everything. Um, you'll be guided to where you need to clear. And then one other thing that I talked about on the live uh, yesterday, but I wanted to. I'm not sure that, that my computer crashed and all kinds of stuff happened. Um, but I just wanted to uh, bring this about is that there is a book by um, about Sanat Kumara, and I don't have the here, oh, I don't have it here. Um, So, sorry, let me check my, my Kindle. Um, so it's a book, um, channeling uh, Sanat Kumara. It's called The Story of Sanat Kumara, and it's by Janet McClure, uh, Training a Planetary Logos. And so I talked about that whole story yesterday, and I channeled Sanat yesterday. Uh, but I just wanted to talk about the two things that I think were cut off, I'm not sure, but um, he, in one of his lives he was an artist and he was painting, he was making this painting and uh, it gave him a lot of hope and he put the painting out in a public space and he found that uh, people weren't getting the hope that he was getting from it. Uh, people weren't getting the, the uh, message that his art was, was, was there to, to give. And so what he did was he went into the painting, um, I guess in his mind, he went into the painting and he created a magnetic field around it so that when people are watching it, they become, they get drawn into the, the painting and then they can feel all of this hope and all of this, this love. And so that is, I think, something very, very powerful that we all can do um, in anything that we're doing. Um, so if we're creating something to create a magnetic field around it so that people can be pulled into that and get that energy um, And I find this I think I was talking about this too uh, with my music that I write my music is very 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 subtle um, Like I think a lot of things that I do are very subtle and it kind of goes under the radar <laughs> I I and I as a personality I tend to go under the radar um, but so it's but what what I'm trying to do in my music is I'm trying to touch like different parts of your heart that usually are not really touched uh, so usually of course there's the joy and sadness and all of these things but um, I'm trying I'm experimenting with trying to to get to different parts of your heart um, and moving different parts of you and so with with my composed music uh, that's what I was trying to do but I find that a lot of people just heard the surface and it was just too subtle for them and they just put it into a category. Oh, that's that kind of music. Okay, I don't want to listen to it kind of thing. Oh, I like this music or whatever it is. But they weren't really getting like, no, 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 there's so much more underneath it. You just have to go in there. But I needed to create a magnetic field. So I'm going to start doing that with the music that I've written in the past and what I continue to write now um, in order to, to get people to really understand because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm it's not necessarily music for music's sake, but it's music that it's, there's a message there that I want people to get, a message of, of hope and a message of peace that I think was, is very subtle and sometimes hard to connect with in this crazy, crazy world. So that was my spiel about that. And then another thing, and I think I covered it again yesterday, but just want to cover it again because I think it's really important, is that in one of Sanat's life, lives he was um, communicating with these goats uh, there were these beautifully colored goats on this planet and then there were these people who were trying to kill the goats in very violent ways and take their life force and Sanat could communicate with the goats and was trying to tell them how they could protect themselves but they would never listen to him they just said what's this guy do who is this guy why is he telling us what to do you know we know what to do we're goats and um, but but finally there was a, a very tragic incident where many of the goats were slaughtered and finally they decided to listen to Sanat Kumara and he said okay here's what you got to do um, you have to build a magnetic force field around you uh, a field of love around you and that you have to continually uh, make sure that it, it's that it is um, integral it, uh, make sure of its integrity um, 
so that you know check make sure that this part of the it's like a wall and you just want to make sure that the wall is okay and there's no problems with the construction of the wall and uh, and to keep it up I mean, just in your mind right you just think about it every day and just make sure reinforce it and that he got all of the goats in this one community to do that and so if if a whole community of goats were doing it it's a very very strong wall and so these people that wanted to steal their energy could not penetrate it they um, and I don't know how it works my in my imagination I imagine that they were trying they could see the goats and they were trying to get close to them but they just I think with the wall there I think probably what happens is they just forgot where they were and they just decided to do something else I think it, it was a gentle I think it's what, what they call the loving boundary it just kind of they just forgot why they were there and decided to leave and we can create these and so that's what I was trying to say yesterday too is that um, these pockets of peace that exist for example in Japan there are many pockets of peace well the whole country is like a pocket of peace and you can feel this very very intense peaceful feeling this is something I talk about a lot um, <laughs> sorry if, if uh, it's too much or if I'm saying it too much but I think it's really important um, these pockets of peace and these pockets of peace for example in this country have um, the walls of this this peace have been reinforced and reinforced and reinforced and continually to be reinforced and so you end up being able to live in this very very uh, peaceful society um, now of course there there are um, th we're in 3d or 3d rising there, there is yin and yang everywhere, so it's it's not a perfect society by any means. But but there is peace. There is a pockets of peace, and we can create these wherever we are, wherever you are around the world. All you need to do is to do that. Um, so I do that. For example, in my neighborhood, I I I'm, I'm doing that every day. I create, um, I send out all of this energy to protect and to raise the frequency of of my neighborhood, and then I extend it out to um, this whole country and then to the whole world. And I'm just one person doing that. Um, imagine if we all did that. Imagine that. Imagine if only, what, 10% of the population did that every day. Whew. You know, we would be living in um, an amazing, peaceful, amazingly peaceful society. So that is um, my recommendation for all of you. Um, magnetic fields. Create magnetic fields. You can do it. And all you need, all you need to do, the, the technique is easy. All you do is think of it and use your creative power you are creators you're creator gods right you are creators you're making everything that you see and but a lot of the times you're creating unconsciously um, so create consciously that's all so um, use your intention I want to create this uh, force field around for example my home or my neighborhood and I want just to keep only peaceful and high dimension beings here and I don't want any lowered kind of dimensional things coming in. And that's it. And you just imagine it. You just imagine it. And then every day you kind of think about it, reinforce it, make sure it's there. And if you could get more than one person to do it, maybe yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll get, I'll try, we'll try to get a, uh, a session where we all just create this force field uh, of peace, a pocket of peace in your own world, in your own place. So that's, uh, that's what I wanted to come on to say today. Um, I'm not going to channel in this one. I thought maybe I'll just talk in this one and then maybe separate talking and channeling. Have a, but I don't know. Tell me what you think. If, uh, if you would prefer talking and channeling together or you prefer them separate. Um, yeah, please, if, if you could just comment and tell me, cause I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. And, uh, I'm here for you guys. So yeah, just tell me. And also, um, yeah, if you're interested, I have a book on dragons down below, and I have a book, uh, a singing guide uh, with the Hathors below. So, yeah, if you're interested in that, please check. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, ciao.